My name is Kathleen Ash Milby, and I'm the curator of Native American art at the Portland Art Museum. Thank you for joining us for a discussion about memory and a historical amnesia in Native American art. History is a form of public memory. It is a narrative that is created by stories, recorded, or repeated over time, but it is also shaped by what is left out. History is perceived as an official, accepted narrative about the past, but it is really only a version of a long-standing tradition of storytelling that has been recorded or written down and then reproduced. Storytelling as a means to pass on cultural knowledge has been with us since people formed communities from the ancient times to the present. For centuries, Native Americans have relied on storytelling as a form of retaining cultural and personal memories. For some groups, certain stories regarding a tribe or clan's origin story were only told in the winter, when families and communities had less to do and had more time to pass together or indoors. The same stories were repeated over and over, which ensured that the narrative survived and was passed to the next generation. One characteristic of oral tradition or storytelling to preserve knowledge is that the story would not be unchanging and static. It was a living tradition and would inevitably be shaped by the people who heard the stories and repeated them for others. This was a source of frustration for later historians and anthropologists who recorded these stories in books and other publications, since there were always multiple versions or details of the same narratives. Among tribes from the plains, as early as the 18th century, a pictorial tradition of painting on hide and later drawing on paper from ledger books became a means to remind a person who was recalling an event of the important details. Art served as a mnemonic device or trigger for memories to be shared with the community. For example, some Lakota communities kept a calendar referred to as a winter count on hide or later paper to remember important events that happened each year. It is referred to as a winter count because winter was the season used to measure the passing of a year. Whatever important event happened that year would be indicated with a single drawing. For example, a figure with a hat might represent a year that white men wearing these hats visited. Or a drawing of several stars could be the year there were meteor showers or a large comet in the sky. Community members didn't need the details of the story, just a reminder that it was the year that stars fell from the sky, for example, to tell the rest of the story about the year or that event. To learn more about winter counts, I suggest that you follow the link below or click the button at the top right of this video for a short but very informative video about this tradition. Individual men who were warriors in their community used this pictorial tradition of painting or drawing to record what they wanted to remember about their experience and repeat to others. Here's an example from our collection. In this drawing, this Dakota or Lakota artist has depicted a warrior on horseback, fleeing in a hail of bullets or arrows being shot at him by his enemy. The number of shots fired at him is enormous, as you can see but he and his horse are both uninjured. I would love to have heard the story this warrior told about escaping this battle unharmed. The event depicted in this drawing did not end well for one of the warriors. On the left, we can see that the artist's enemy is bleeding badly, as is the horse up above. There are many details the artist included to remember this event. The horse's tail is tied with what appears to be red trade cloth. And we can tell that his dying enemy was probably a crow warrior because of his hairstyle. This drawing is very different. Instead of a victory in battle, this scene depicts what looks like a romantic conquest instead. In many Plains tribes, before people were forced onto reservations, when a young man was courting, he would invite the young woman to join him under his blanket so they could have some private time, even though they were surrounded by her family. In this scene, you can see the young man reaching out with his large blanket, and his very handsome horse is standing behind him. Contemporary Native artists create art which reminds us of historical events and memories that were purposefully forgotten, changing our understanding of history. Mohawk artist Alan Michelson is especially known for work that challenges accepted historical memory in American popular culture. Public memory, as reflected in history books and public monuments, has largely confined Native Americans to the past 
and erase their ongoing presence and relevance in our country's history. In 2018, Michelson created a monument in Richmond, Virginia, to honor the state's Native nations. Most Americans associate American Indians with the Western and Midwestern states, but the East Coast has a deep Native American legacy, and Michelson's monument, titled Mantle, is in an area steeped in colonial history. The spiral design of the monument is based on the spiral shape of snail shells on the historic Powhatan's mantle, an embroidered deer hide believed to have been gifted to England by Chief Powhatan in 1608. Each of the swirling shapes in the design of this heraldic cloak are believed to have represented each of the nations in his confederacy. In this detail, you can see the swirling. Michelson also used the swirling form of the shells themselves as inspiration for the monument, which invites visitors to follow a winding path into the center to view a water feature with the names of the tribal nations who made the lands we now know as Virginia their home. A work that I think speaks very directly to the current attention focused on historic monuments and memory is this work, Hanodaga Gayas, or Town Destroyer a video installation projected onto a bust of George Washington mounted on a map surveyor's tripod. George Washington is represented in American history as an important founding father, a heroic figure who served as the country's first president and whose portrait is on our $1 bill. But during the Revolutionary War, the Haudenosaunee, also known as the Six Nations of the Iroquois, knew General Washington by the name Town Destroyer because of his brutal campaign against them, in which he destroyed an estimated 60 Haudenosaunee villages, hundreds of houses, farms, and orchards, burning everything his troops left behind. Michelson reminds us of this violent history by projecting a series of images across Washington's face, including battle maps, monument texts, romantic portraits, flames, and eventually a wampum belt. A diplomatic symbol of peace and unity between the Six Nations, which continued to persist despite Washington's campaign of destruction. As these silent images distort his portrait, Michelson challenges us to rethink and question Washington's true legacy. You can watch an excerpt of the video on the artist's website with this link, or see the work in person during the run of the group exhibition, Prototypes, organized by Converge 45, as part of Portland's Monuments and Memorials Project, opening on August 25th in Portland. Thank you for joining us.